What toxic behavior has been normalized by society? The expectation that employees should be constantly reachable even outside of work hours or during paid or unpaid time off. It effectively creates a situation where you are on call 24-7. Ghosting people, whether it's for job interviews, dating, hanging out, or anything. I think tech has made it way too convenient to verbally agree to something or commit but flake out just because you don't feel like following through. I wish more people were more direct. Severe confirmation bias. Bubble building. It's already easy enough to filter out anything you don't want to see online. And now all these new algorithms keep feeding you the same stuff. So everyone's social media is becoming their own private echo chamber. Edit. Just a little bit of positivity amidst all the noise. And some advice for those who feel helpless. Don't worry about sides. Focus less on social media. And spend the time you save doing something new putting yourself in positions that introduce you to new and different people. You'll find that the world is a lot less divisive and weaponized than Fox and CNN want us to think. That there are lots of great people out there that are still great even if you have different views. I know it's said all the time, but the media is a bubble, and corporations put a lot of money and effort into framing an agenda for more reasons than I can explain. If you get outside that bubble more often, You'll be relieved to find that the world is still a very wonderful place, and that most people aren't so agenda-driven. Just remember that we're all humans. At the end of the day, we're all here for the same reason. Editing photos for social media to a point where the picture doesn't even look like you anymore. Whoa, this one has to be one of the top answers. Filters have definitely turned into a long-term curse. First. The enemy was the fashion industry and Hollywood but now you can do the very same tactics they do with an app. That's why I saw the whole Facetune phase is dangerous because that can cause more damage to your self-esteem than the fun it advertises. I've heard of plastic surgeons who are having more and more patients coming in with Snapchat selfies as their desired look. It's really disheartening, especially for the upcoming generation. I want you to make me look like this, Doc. You want a cartoon dog's nose? It's covered by insurance, right? Airing your dirty laundry to the world via social media. If you and your spouse have an argument, work it out amongst the two of you. The whole world doesn't need to know your marital drama. This is the main reason I stay off of Facebook. For the most part one agree, but there are some rare exceptions. I know a girl who was in a physically abusive marriage. She posted a link to arrest report and how she didn't want any shit for getting a divorce after only being married for two months. I feel like people who abuse their spouse and kids should get called out on that shit. Treating workers like second-class citizens, especially all my brothers and sisters in retail. I stopped fucking taking it. I have worked at my job long enough and I am reliable enough to tell customers to fuck off when they get snappy with me. It sucks that my other brothers in arms don't get that same luxury. But I am glad I do and I will always fight for any employee. The immediacy of an answer. Everyone wants it, with it being what they ordered, a message being sent. Right away. An immediate answer. I get that with technology and such it's easier but if people can calm down, certain things still take time. Patience. Work in retail and you'll realize this. People yell at you for not knowing the answer for something. It seems like people forget we aren't robots. Narcissism. Assuming the worst interpretations of what people say. Now listen here you little shit. My opinion is better than your opinion. Because I don't give a logical fuck about what you said. I won't think about anything I say because you angered me with your stupid bullshit words. Also, I am the embodiment of righteousness on this earth and my morality is unquestionable. Whoa mom, when did you get a Reddit account? Posting photos and videos of kids being pranked or humiliated in the hopes it'll go viral. Using your kids to shore up your own online presence in any way besides sharing updates with close friends and family. Ex that mommy blogger who refused to stop writing about her daughter even when the daughter directly asked her not to. The kids have no say in how their images and lives are being used. It violates their privacy and opens them up to further humiliation later on in life. Yet it keeps happening. Blindly following what is perceived to be a popular opinion, people don't think for themselves near as much as they should. There is no harm in taking a minute to research the accuracy of something before stating your opinion on it. 
The worst part is when they call someone wrong without actually researching it. Acceptance of lack of logic in arguments. Right. People need to know that an opinion and an argument are two different things. And asserting something is not the same thing as demonstrating how that something is true. Being a dick to strangers over the internet. I remember way back when chat rooms were a thing it was really uncommon to encounter abuse. Even online games, like Age of Empires 2, didn't really have a toxicity element. This. I have been gaming almost my entire life, and it just keeps getting worse and worse every year. Online dragging for brownie points, verbally demolishing someone online. When you have people who genuinely don't understand something and are asking questions out of curiosity, people, especially with some kind of following on social media, would rather publicly drag that person for not knowing instead of educating them. How do you expect those, especially kids growing up, to understand the ins and outs of a certain community? For example, if you drag them immediately for not understanding the culture and the issues they face? But dragging gets more attention and does better numbers so let's do that. Nobody is born with all the information. We have to learn from somewhere someone. Not being able to say no without having to give an explanation. Or you say no and a good explanation and people are still shitty about it. The customer is always right. Casual waste. The, I'm just gonna toss it mentality. There are many things you never needed to use in the first place, and many trash items that can be donated or recycled. Dude, you should work in a restaurant. The amount of food that gets thrown out on a daily basis is fucking ridiculous. Not to mention any functions or buffets, they are twice as bad. Being savage or petty for the sake of getting a like. 100%. Sometimes I'll overhear my younger sister's conversations, and it's almost all as you described. She seems to take pride in being petty, and it irks me to no end. It seems that she finds trivial conflict to be some sort of validation. I don't understand it at all. Perhaps it's just a high schooler thing. Raising children as a prince princess with no preparation for real life. Saw a lady spoon feeding her 10 years old child while he played on his phone. It was disconcerting. My nephew had tons of Christmas presents, but at dinner he didn't win one of the two crackers he pulled. He complained, then whinged, then started to cry until his grand gave him her cracker. He's gonna be a real pleasure to deal with when he's older. Parents that let their kids run around like crazy in a restaurant like they are the only ones there. If you can't handle me at my worst, you don't deserve me at my best. This slogan has somehow given shitty people the notion that they can do really shitty stuff to people, instead of meaning being there for someone during bad times. It's your worst times, not your worst behavior, don't be a piece of shit. An unjustified sense of entitlement. Yup, a lot of people think that just because they are breathing they are deserved everything on a silver platter. The on-demand world doesn't help either. I've had so many shared Uber and Lyft rides with the worst people ever. One girl snapped at the driver because he asked her if it was correct that she was going to the west side of town. Poor guy was just trying to make sure he was headed in the right direction in case his GPS failed, as he told me when I got in the car. I think she felt he should have just been an automaton instead of a human being. Being so set in our ways that we don't even begin to listen to differing opinions. It's sad. These so-called prankers who are trying to make videos for amusement. Most of the time all set up and all people involved are aware and playing along, but the few that happen to the general public can cause major problems. Imagine if it's you just sitting there getting for work and a bucket of water dumped in your head, or at a function with family friends and food dumped all over you, just for laughs. To me a true prank is where both parties laugh at the end. People willingly sacrifice all aspects of their privacy, for irrelevant and anonymous attention. The cheating side chick culture. Being cheated on can really hurt someone. As a nurse I would say threatening kids with shots as a punishment is ultra common but super toxic. It's bad because you're threatening a child with physical violence. They need the shots regardless. So they will be very confused distraught upset when they've been good and still have to go in for shots. Talking on speakerphone or video chat. Or forcing everyone to hear your shitty music. Dating people who you desire to fix. What toxic behavior has been normalized by society? 
leave a comment, and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this one.